que você é incapaz? Por que você não pode? Na verdade, uma melhor pergunta seria, por que você se acha incapaz? Nesse vídeo, eu vou mostrar a história de um cara, que não é para você sentir pena dele ou olhar ele. Na verdade, é mais cabível que você sinta pena de você ao ver a história desse rapaz, porque ele é digno de muita admiração, pois ele é melhor que muitos de nós, e quando digo nós, eu me coloco em primeiro lugar, pois ele conseguiu aceitar a sua história, aceitar a sua condição, a sua história e a sua condição física, pois ele não tem os dois braços e as duas pernas. E além disso, além de aceitar a sua história, ele conseguiu encontrar um propósito e um sentido para essa sua história e essa sua condição física. Quando se fala nos aspectos de corpo, mente e espírito, no espírito ele conseguiu vencer porque, através de Deus, ele conseguiu aceitar a sua história e encontrar um propósito para a sua história e para a sua condição. Na mente, ele conseguiu vencer a mente porque ele conseguiu destruir as mazelas mentais que ele tinha, que ficavam mostrando para ele que ele era pior, que ele não merecia aquilo, que Deus tinha feito tudo errado com ele. E hoje em dia ele é feliz. E se tratando do aspecto do corpo, esse é o mais fácil de tirar uma conclusão. Eu vou deixar que vocês mesmos olhem e tirem suas conclusões. E através desse vídeo, dessa história, dessa experiência, eu deixo a minha mensagem de feliz Páscoa para vocês. E que você não precisa se achar incapaz, porque Deus não fez nada errado. Cristo ressuscitou, verdadeiramente ressuscitou. E Deus te ama. Então, assista atentamente esse vídeo. What makes someone extraordinary? Their abilities? Their talent? Or simply, their smile? My dad was saying that he was, you know, his head was next to my mum's head as, uh, as I was being born, and he saw my shoulder, and he just went pale. And my dad had to leave the room and he couldn't believe what he saw and the doctor came in and my dad said, my son, he has no right arm. And he says, no, your son has no arms or legs. And he said he nearly fell on the floor, he couldn't believe it. Why would God let the pastor's son be born that way? And my mum, at first, she, she didn't want to hold me, she didn't want to, you know, breastfeed me and all that. Um, she just felt very uncomfortable for the first four months and it took them quite a while before they could trust in God that he didn't make a mistake, that he didn't forget them or me. Nick's parents gave their fear and even disappointment in their son's disability over to the Lord. I challenged God. I said, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I won't probably have peace until you're in my heart, but I will not let you in my heart until you answer me why. Why did you take my arms and legs? Why didn't you give me what everybody else has. And so I wanted to end it. If God wasn't going to end my pain, I was going to end it myself. So at age eight, I tried to drown myself in a bathtub of four inches of water. I told my mom and dad, I'm just going to relax in the bathtub. Can you put me in the bathtub? And uh, yeah, I turned over a couple times to see if I could do it. I couldn't do it. Um, the thought that stopped me from going through with it was the love for my parents. That would be the last time Nick would attempt suicide, but it wouldn't be the last time he would come face to face with those deep issues that made him want to end the pain. Then one day, Nick's mother had him read an article about a severely disabled man, and that man's story made a huge impact on Nick. <laughs> I have a choice to either be angry at God for what I don't have or be thankful for what I do have. And my mom, she said, Nick, God's going to use you. I don't know how, I don't know when, but God's going to use you. And that's when I started seeing that there is no point in being complete on the outside when you're broken on the inside. And I found out that God can heal you without changing a circumstance. I gave my life to Jesus Christ when I read John 9 at age 15, where a man was coming through a village and a man, um, this, this blind man from birth, Jesus saw him. People said, why was this man born that way? Jesus said, it was done so that the works of God may be revealed through him. And I felt like God answered my question. The question was, why? Why did you make me this way? And the answer was, do you trust me? That's the question. And when you say yes to that question, nothing else matters. But once we realize that when we read the word of God and you know the truth of who you are, I am not a man 
without arms and legs. I'm a, I am a child of God. I am forgiven of my sins. I'm an ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm nothing but a servant of the Most High God. God, though, lives in me, and I now live in His strength. And whatever Jesus conquered, I conquer. I believe if God doesn't give you a miracle, you are a miracle of God for somebody else's salvation. And I thank God that He didn't answer my prayer when I was begging Him for arms and legs at age eight. Because guess what? Because I have no arms and no legs, He's using me all around the world. And we've seen so far, approximately, uh, this is conservative, 200,000 souls come to Jesus Christ for the very first time in the last six, seven years. Because I'd rather have no arms and no legs temporarily here on earth to be able to reach someone else for Jesus Christ. That He hasn't forgotten your pain, He hasn't forgotten your family. And maybe while you're watching this interview, you've compared your suffering to my suffering. And that's not where hope is, to know that someone else, in your opinion, is suffering more than you. That's not where hope is. But hope is in the name of God, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope is when you compare your suffering to the infinite, immeasurable love and grace of God. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength, that shall mount up on wings as eagles. I didn't need my circumstance to change. I don't need arms and legs. I need the wings of the Holy Spirit. And I'm flying because I know Jesus is holding me up. Don't give up on God, because God will not give up on you.